Discovering the North York Moors is wonderful. I'm getting to know more of the lush countryside and a lot of the lovely villages. But this village, words fail me, I can't even describe it. It's just absolutely amazing. <laughs> I'm staying in the pretty village of Hutton Le Hole, one of the most popular beauty spots in the North York Moors. Situated about seven miles northwest of Pickering, Hutton Le Hole is in the Rydale district of North Yorkshire. Today I've decided to have a good look around this wonderful village before going on a walk later on. Hutton Le Hole lies in a hollow and has a long winding village green, famous for the moorland sheep which wander freely along it. The Hutton Beck runs through the middle of the green, with footbridges crossing the stream. The first written record of a village comes from the Doomsday Book, where a village called Houghton is recorded. It was a small village even then, with eight caracuts of land, enough to support eight families. The village name was transformed over the medieval period, from Hedge Houghton to Houghton under Hegg to Houghton, and then in the 17th century, Hutton in the Hole. The present name, Hutton the Hole, only appeared in the 19th century. But what does its name actually mean? Several theories have been put forward but the most likely is that hole refers to burial mounds. Several ancient burial mounds can be found nearby, so it seems plausible that the name simply means the place near the burial mounds. I'm staying in a really nice guest house here in Hutton the Hole, and it's the barn right behind me. The barn is a guest house and it's also a tea room. It's run by a very friendly couple who made me feel very welcome when I arrived yesterday. And this morning the breakfast was really nice and it was a big portion so I don't need to eat now until tea time. It's going to keep me going. So a really nice base for the North York Moors and in one of the nicest villages I think I've ever been to. Behind the barn are the craft workshops, whose artists are hard at work making chocolate, candles, rugs, moorland crafts, glassware and ceramics. During my stay here, I thought it would be extremely rude of me not to treat myself to some of the local handmade chocolates from the chocolate factory. Most people visit Hutton Le Hall to see the Rydale Folk Museum, where 17 traditional buildings from the area have been rescued from destruction and rebuilt. Among the buildings to explore 
are an Elizabethan manor, shops, workshops, barns and thatched cottages. The museum shows what life was like in Rydale over a span of time from the medieval period to the present day. Next door to the museum is one of the most popular gathering places in the village, the Crown Inn. Although the inn dates only to 1940, it stands on the site of an earlier building used as a small holding, built in the 18th century. I visited the Crown Inn last night, where I enjoyed a really nice meal. Hold is such a beautiful village. Well, I've had a good look around the place now, so I'm going to start my walk. My walk began opposite the village hall, where I turned left onto a waymarked path between cottages. Passing a bowling green, my path led me along the edge of several fields. Soon I crossed over a footbridge and passed through a small larch wood. Exiting the wood, I had clear views to my left of Spawnton Moor. At the end of this path, I came out onto a lane and followed it, carrying along in the same direction. After about half a mile, I left the lane along a waymarked track on the left. The grassy route curved right beside a fence, bordering the edge of Bear Moorland towards Camomile Farm.
Approaching the farm, I turned slightly left at a fork and headed towards the walled corner of a wood. path descended steeply where I crossed Ella's Beck. Climbing straight up the hill on the other side, I met a junction by a wooden seat. I decided to sit here for a while to take in the fantastic views around me. Moving on, I turned right down an intake track and left the moor through a gate, beyond which a lane dropped into Lastingham. The main claim to fame of this small and peaceful village is its fascinating church, built on the site of an early Saxon monastery. The monastery later suffered from Danish raids, but reconstruction began after the Norman conquest. The work was never completed, however, and the grand plans were abandoned in the 13th century, with the monastery being converted into the modest parish church. Fortunately, much of the work remains, in particular the superb apse at the East End, and the unique Isles Crypt, very unchanged since the 11th century, and a magnificent example of Norman architecture. I have a friend back home who visited Lastingham with his wife a few months ago and whilst they were staying here they had dinner here at the blacksmiths and they recommended it to me very highly so I'm going to try it for myself this evening. And that's exactly what I did. I returned to Lastingham that evening and enjoyed a fantastic meal in this cosy pub in which I felt extremely comfortable. Back to today's walk, I walked through the village, turned right over a bridge and continued along a lane in front of a row of cottages. I soon left Lastingham as I climbed quite steeply to emerge at a lane, leading me through the tiny hamlet of Spawnton. Following the lane through Spawnton, I came to the village Pinfold, believed to date from the 18th century, and was commonly used for holding stray animals until they were claimed by their owners and released on payment of a fine. Passing this, I swung left, following a farm track known as Spawnton Lane. After about a quarter of a mile, I turned right at a junction to follow Lingmore Lane.
It's interesting how different the countryside is now on this part of the walk. This morning when I left Hutton La Hole and the stretch between there and Lastingham was much more of the open rugged moorland typical of the North York Moors. Whereas now I'm walking through more gentle rolling farmland which is nice and it makes it a really varied walk. Eventually, the path descended onto the road, where I found myself back in Hutton La Hall. My walk to Lastingham had been superb, but before I made my way back to the barn guest house to unwind, I decided to spend a little while taking another walk around the lovely Hutton La Hole. For this particular visit to the North York Moors, I'm really pleased that I chose to stay in Hutton La Hole, one of the prettiest and nicest villages I have ever had the pleasure of visiting. <laughs> 